who should coach the Bombers? Ross Lyon, James Hurd, Ken Hinckley, or another option? And you must specify who that other option is. David King's in the house. He's in fine form this morning. King, good morning. Good morning, Cornsey. I keep wondering why we put Ken Hinckley in these mm. holes. His name keeps coming up, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and he's he's over he's over that discussion. I think I don't, I don't know how many times he has to address this. Do Blame you me. still hey? Blame me because I was. Why do you for keep a, putting him in? What, well, what I was you, looking for. A, I was looking for a, a, oh, okay. Twitter poll suggestion. And right. I, you know, the, 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 there's not a plethora of names, is there? Well, out there of experienced coaches. Well, let's change that to current coach, a current AFL coach in another in another role. Like, if you're going for Ken Hinckley, why wouldn't you be going for Damien Hardwick? Mm. Essendon man. Feels a bit more technically feels a bit more gettable though, doesn't he? Because he does. of the pressure that he's under at Port Adelaide versus you know Richmond probably wouldn't let Hardwick go with a couple of years to go on his deal. But Hardwick, but who would you want of the two? Oh, you would take Hardwick. That's yeah, like yeah. Essendon need a they need a big scalp here. Mm. I'm not sure a first timer will appease the fans. A big scout. So who should that big scout be? Now Ross Lyon's name always comes up when there's a, a job. They can see now he, if you read between the lines and what he said on Wednesday's footy classified, he feels gettable. He's a top liner. He's a star. He, you know, everyone says, oh, but he hasn't won a flag. He hasn't done this. I mean, how many grand finals do you need to go to to endorse your, your CV? I think these challenge players to get the best out of themselves. He's set really hard and fast standards that he then hands on to the leadership group to maintain. He doesn't. He's not the dictator. He just. He he basically. He basically allows the leaders to lead, and then just and then just puts this game plan. And sure, it's defensive. Sure, it is. It always has been. But when St Kilda had the capabilities to be a high-scoring team, if you look at those teams of you know mm. eight, nine, ten, that, that, they were scoring heavily right throughout those seasons. And maybe they clamped up through the final series. Absolutely, they probably did. You know, the last two or three home and away games. But I think one of those years they were averaging a hundred points right up until the last. You know, fortnight of the home and away season. So that he can score. If he wants to set the game up to score, he, he'll do that. So I, I don't understand the negativity around Ross. And I think Essendon need Ross right now more than any other person. Wow. 1-300-736-736. He's, I mean, there's not that many experienced coaches out there and they've said that they want an experienced coach. So unless you can poach someone from another club and it feels really late to be doing that when there's a review still to be undertaken, um, he's the one that, Feels like the right fit at the moment, but some Bombers fans don't want to see that, and there's still the looming factor of James yeah. Hurd in the background there as well. Which well, where clearly do you sit with that. I just wanted to ask. I'm you. really, I'm really uh, would love to see Ross get the job there. I have no issue with that. I'm just trying to think of the other names that are viable for the Bombers at the moment. There would be the Leon Cameron types. Could you convince Nathan Buckley, even though he said repeatedly that he doesn't want to coach? Um, Justin Lepich would be a person that I'd absolutely have a chat to. He, he's been there and done that, and, and you could argue that he's an experienced coach with the record that he's got. So can I – all right, so strip it back, okay? So Essendon say, we, we're interested in Ross. Would you be comfortable with Ross not going through a process and, and being given the job by the Bombers? Um – I'd be comfortable with a similar Alistair Clarkson process where it's not an official – sit down and have a look at a PowerPoint presentation, but it's lengthy chats about your fl footy philosophy, where you see the list, where you see the club. So uh, you'd want some sort of process. It's not just right, the job's yours. You'd want to know exactly where his head's at, how much footy has he watched in the last two years, where does he see the list, what are his concerns. Um, so I would call that some sort of process, but not your traditional process that saying Adam Kingsley has been through. Had a chat with Lee Matthews years ago. Got stuck at an airport with Lee. Uh, Tony Lennon was there and we were just sitting there and he was he was actually hanging around in Western Australia to go and visit Scott Burns, I think, for one of the jobs. It might have even been the Collingwood job way back mm. when. And I asked him, I said, Lee, what, what are the things that when you're holding these sort of coaching discussions with potential candidates, what are you hoping to hear? Well, they tell you a lot of things. He said, look, they all come in and say, we're going to play a contested brand, a contested brand of footy and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And he said, the one thing that, that annoyed him at the time is, is they come in and talk about the list. He says, they don't even know these players as people. How do you know what you can get out of A, B and C or mm. D, E and F? If they've got challenges, do they need an arm around? Do they need a kick uh, up the bum? What do they actually need? And I thought, that's a great call. So I'm not as sold on Ross walking in knowing the list. Know that it's got the capability to be clearly better than what it is. 
Yep. He's seen enough footy over the last. He's a footy viewer, footy watcher. He he, he could tell you what uh, what what he could do with Essendon immediately mm. to correct them for at least another four to five wins like like that. Yeah. So what would the expectation be? So so another four to five win that has you, you know, finishing six, you know, five or six, and and winning potentially a final, which they haven't done. That would be your expectation for the Bombers, like they're capable of that. Yeah, I, they've got a very good. I think they've got a very good list, and this is why I don't understand the Dodoro feedback. Been through it. I've studied studied that the, you know the two years they were left out of the draft has been it's made them play a little bit of catch up from that point forward. Uh, so they've had to give up a little bit more to get. Dylan Shiel and Devin Smith and those guys because you, they just needed them. So, uh, no, I, I think this list is capable of, of at least winning 13 to 14 games. All right. I hope you say on that, Essendon fans. We'll take your calls right throughout the morning. Um, 1300 736 736. Now, the AFL have changed another rule, Kingy. So, oh, no. um, just reading this from Michael Gleeson in The Age, the umpires have been reminded to call play on if players f- uh, fake to try and milk a 50 metre penalty from the stand rule. Uh, we've seen Sam Doherty and others do it. I think Jack Higgins did it in a game against Brisbane a fortnight or so ago. So the AFL has said to dislike players trying to uh, draw this 50-metre penalty from the stand rule. So we've got another adjudication change. <coughs> wasn't, the, wasn't the whole point of this, these, these changes and everything to not make them on the eve of the finals? So when the dissent rule come out, hey, we're going we're to take this out of the game so that we're not talking about it in the back half of the year. We're going we're to stamp this out so that it, 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 won't, it won't impact a final because the players will be across the rule and they will have adjusted by then and will be right to go. It'll be seamless through a final series. So why is that stance different to this? We're actually making a change during the gap week between the home and away season and the finals. Have you ever heard of anything more ridiculous? Well, this is the thing when you change rules. There's issues that bob up that they haven't thought of. This is why I'm massive on trialling rules. Now, this is the right adjudication to make. It's the right change to make. But my concern is, all right, so umpires have got to look for the guy on the mark to make sure he's standing still. Then they've got to look to make sure the guy with the footy doesn't play on because if he does, he's got to call play on. Now you've got to look to see if the, um, if the player's feigning a handball, then he's got to call play on. We have made this game... So hard for the umpire. So but no one wanted okay. to see. It's okay well, that it's hard, right? But you can't change it on the eve of the finals, can you? Well, that's that's the point. It makes it yeah. hard. They've umpired it one way all year, and then after 23 weeks, we're changing it again. In the end, the rule change is right. No one wanted to see a 50-meter penalty paid because a, a player's trying to milk a 50. So the call is right, but when you change significant rules, these are the issues that happen. Uh, King, I've written today about the West Coast Eagles. I was listening to uh, Trevor Nisbet's comments throughout the week on Channel 7, and essentially what they've done after the worst season in club history is, is guarantee the status quo, really. So we know Adam Simpson you know, not, not going to make a change with the coach who's contracted. He's basically guaranteed all of the experienced senior players to come back. Luke Shuey's already recommitted. Feels like Shannon Hearn and Nick Nat Nui and Redden, and, and these players will all be coming back again. Um, and not a whole lot is going to change at the Eagles. After a two-win season, are they in denial, or is that the right way to go about it, do you think? It's a good question, isn't it? In denial, look, for me, in denial is a bit strong because they'd be far from in denial. They'd be looking at their list every day. They'd be making assessments every day on where they're at and where they're going, and, and, and I always come back to you've got to know where you're at. So the decisions you make have got to be in line with the position that you find yourself on the AFL table. Are you rebuilding? Despite the number of wins you're having, are you rebuilding? Are you trying to blast through that that no man's land table sort of position six to six to thirteen? Mm. Or are you actually you know, in contention range? Are you looking for one player to make the difference? Are you looking for that Jeremy Cameron type trade to absolutely go bang next level? and challenge in a different way, while still also getting the delisted free agent of Tyson Stengel. So they're the sort of decisions that I'm talking about. So I understand you – I read your article. I like like the discussion. So let's let's put that on the table. But what are the the options? So what are the solutions? What are the options? What what would you do? I Mm. I think it's okay for us to say you're too old, you've got to move on X, Y, and Z. Well, the kangaroos tipped a few of the senior blokes. Yeah, that hasn't worked either. I'm not sure their mid-core is as strong as as what they would have hoped at this stage. And then they've got a, they've got a lack of quality draft picks coming through, so it's ground zero there. So what what's your solution? Well, the solution was to to 
it's like it's like inflation, right? There's an issue in the world with inflation. So what's the solution? You raise interest rates, but to do that, it causes a whole lot of pain. I mean, you got to go through some pain to get that. The the unemployment rate rises, everything. Uh, your, your mortgage is more expensive. So there's some pain that comes with that. Perhaps the, the economy goes into recession. So it's like what the Eagles should have done. They needed to cut deeper, rise interest rates, and then the pain comes with that. But That's retrospective, end, you're, you're yeah. Better, but but I've, ri- I wrote about, I've written about this for eight yeah. months. So, so honest, what should honest. they do today is what I'm asking. So you need to get as much talent as you possibly can. The problem is that they're, they're in denial, and I say that because they're a bit hamstrung with the contracts that they've got. Now, we, we do read in the Herald Sun that seven uh, players are commanding th- – you know, a, a large chunk of their salary cap, but how do you move on a, a so ideally you would be able to trade out a Gaff or even a McGovern, uh, even a Jack Darling to um, alleviate some of the pressure and then get some of that talent that, that you need in. So you've got to find a way to go to the draft. That's what you, it's what you have to do. I, I don't know how they're going to do that though. And they're refusing to acknowledge that the position that the club is in, everything's fine. There's nothing to see here. Um, we're going to wind it back. Coach is good. Um, our fitness staff is great. The list manager is going to keep their spot. I just, I'd like an acknowledgement of the position that the club is in firstly, before you can actually do anything about it. Yeah. So, so do you think they're acknowledging I don't know the about position that they're in? The latter acknowledges where you're at. And, and, and I think to explain to the fans uh, what's happening, take them on the journey, take them on the ride, that's their role. That's what they must do. We, we all understand that. I just, I'm just waiting for what the solutions are. And I hear this discussion a lot. They won the flag in 2018. You get some concessions after that. You 100%. do. You get you get two to three years after that to do 100%. whatever you like, right? So they've done that. They've stayed the course. I, they've had a lack of fitness across their senior core player, players for a couple of years. I don't think they're as hard, rock hard fit no, they're as not. other they, AFL they, clubs. I'm with you. I'm with you, but they deny that. They, they get really testy when you challenge. Has the standards publicly? Have you been? F- yeah, but I don't well, think that. I, I think what you hear publicly, you've just got to be careful with what we does believe. That satisfy your fans though. Like, uh, yeah. I'm, if I'm a West Coast fan, I'm going, well, hang on, uh, gee, that player he looks out of sh- visibly out of shape. There's three or four of them, and you go, well, but the club says everything's fine, and then they're injured. Anyway, anyway, the Simo's, discussion. Simo's got to, he's got to, he's got to support the player publicly yeah. and still challenge them privately. Yeah, um, my, yeah, my criticism was more at, at Trevor Nisbet. So for would his you comments, trade but, Nick Nat? Well, but I would, but the problem is, I mean, who who would who would tip into Nick Nat with where he is at? I would absolutely have a look at trading Andrew Gaff, but once again, it's really problematic to do that because. What you're going to get back, and would anyone actually have a look at him? I'd trade McGovern. I'd, tra- I'd trade, trade McGovern. Would you? I would. Well, he just doesn't play enough. If, even you. if you only got say a second round pick, um, like you're getting, you're going to get a speculative sort of pick, pick twenty to twenty five now. Well, well, Collingwood are going to trade Brody Grundy, and that's yeah. probably the same discussion. Well, he's um, a top line ruckman though, isn't he? He's, he's in a different. And age. McGovern's a top line but, defender but, when he plays. Brunt, how old would Brody Grundy be? Yeah, he'd be twenty eight. I would, I would to have it, has it a guess, and McGovern McGovern's would be 30. closer to thirty. He's, he is thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's a, it's a chat. It's a good chat. I, I want solutions. Okay, so what, I want to put the challenge out to the to the your fan bases out there at the moment. The club you support. I want to know where you think you're at. So this is the the perennial discussion with St Kilda. Are they challenging, or are they looking to go back to the draft? Are they topping up? What are they doing? I'd like not just St Kilda fans, every fan, that's, particularly mm. those that have missed the eight. Where's your club at? Where are you at? And what's your solution to take them through that next phase into contention for the premiership? So Isaac Rankin's finished 10th in, in the best and fairest. Now I'm not sure whether he would have finished any higher than that had he not decided to leave. I always Ooh, have my suspicions that there's – Doctored the votes. I think there's a little <laughs> bit of doctoring always goes on with players that are likely to leave. And we remember legendary stories of where players have – have uh, lost best and fairest when mm. they've decided to leave. So, no, I, I just can't, still can't get my head around this one, and we haven't really had a, an in-depth chat about it, no. you and I. I think this is one of the most poorly advised players right now that I've seen for some time. A young man at 22 years of age, he's only just getting going. He's only just hitting his straps. He's played, what, 50 games of AFL footy? He's not an $800,000 player. Now, I understand you, you, you get what you pay for, and, and the LA Crows have done a great job in securing their man, and you have to pay overs. I get all that. But the pressure that will be on him right now worries me 
because mm. he's a, he's a small forward. He thrives on on winning his own ball in a forward fifty. He's not a marquee mid, so he won't be able to get the numbers that'll satisfy the fans. I think he'll be under pressure in a heartbeat at the Adelaide Crows. So can I play devil's advocate for yeah. you? Yeah. Um, you've got a you know a five year offer of of the figure that you've mentioned, significant ability to set yourself up. You get to come home to South Australia where he you know clearly would have family and support and, and knows knows the city well. I mean it's a it's a hard one to say no to, is is what I'm saying. But but you're yeah. you're suggesting for his footy and for the player was, that and he the needs to get to, the Gold Coast is the place for him to be. Well, the gap, the gap in the offers is not as is not is not as significant. Six fifty versus eight hundred. Yeah, so it's not yeah. it's not it's not a massive amount. I mean, we're, we're throwing around figures and people in their car go, "Well, that's one hundred and fifty a year. That's a that's a big difference." But if he signs a three year deal at the Gold Coast for six fifty, the next contract, if he's the player that is worth five years at eight hundred, the next contract at the Gold Coast will be significantly higher again. So. I... I just think that there's, there's a stack of pressure coming on this kid. It's, it's, not, it's not a go-home factor, this one. He's got family up at the Gold Coast uh, at the moment, as we, as we know. So when you when you delve a bit deeper in this one, this is not as simple as the go-home factor. Uh, and I, I just worry, Cornsey, that we'll be talking about him at round 15 next year. In, in, in oh, a, we will be. Well, there's no doubt. Because yeah. he's, he's coming to this environment where I'm sitting right now in the two-team town and Adelaide fans will be expecting success and when you pay that sort of figure for a player and you give up what they're going to give from the trade table as well. Yeah. So you've almost derailed your rebuilding plan that was to go to the draft for four or five years. You're giving, going to give up that pick five plus something else to get him. Absolutely, there'll be significant pressure. Can he get to a Shea Bolton level? Because that's what you're paying for. He has to. So that, that's the figure you're paying. You want the yeah. centre half, centre forward player, Tom Papley, uh, Shay Bolton is the comparison that I would uh, compare him to. That he, I think he can get there, but he's going to have to work really hard to get there. So I, I love the bravery of the decision from the Crows. And okay, they're saying we want our man. That's the guy. And how can we get him here as cheap as possible now in terms of uh, draft pick cost and 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 impact on the rebuild? But they're, they're going to have to make this guy a midfielder. Mm. There's no doubt mm. about that. What are your thoughts? Uh, Isaac Rankin finishing 10th in Gold Coast Best and Fairest and Tony Cochran saying money talks. Um, I, I made a comment on Footy Classified. I didn't think it was that controversial really about Alistair Clarkson and, and the decisions that North still have to make and clearly they've made a few since I made that comment on Monday. But I did say that he doesn't rate the draft or words to that effect. I thought that was reasonably common knowledge for Alistair Clarkson and his history at Hawthorne over a long period of time. He hit back and, and called me a shock jock, which is fine for saying that, but I didn't think it was that controversial. And the reason I say that, and I, I spoke to Jared about this yesterday, he has said in 2020, people say, why don't you just rebuild, just go to the draft? You can't go to the draft, it's so compromised. So you have to do it with other mechanisms, free agency, depths of your rookie list, etc. And the first time he spoke publicly as North Melbourne coach, he did mention bolstering the 27, 28-year-old bracket at, at North they got to go to the draft, don't they? And was that a was that a harsh criticism of Clarko, considering he had three picks inside twenty in a ten year period at Hawthorne? I didn't think it was, but is that the strategy that North need to do more so? Go to the draft, like Adelaide have done, like others have done to rebuild this list. Yeah, the the three in ten was when they're there to win them. So, so I, I think you've got to just just pull that back a little bit because they they. Gone to the draft early, rebuilt the club, got you know Franklin, Roughhead, Lewis, all these yep. guys. So they had a core of elite draft picks that Hodge then Mitchell. now yep. they had the luxury during the free agency and trade, you know, when the two new franchises come in, of just handpicking some talent from other clubs and some of them had some cost and some didn't um, in terms of the draft picks. So I, I think those numbers were in can the window, be distorted. Were they in the window when they went hard for Mitchell and O'Meara and Wingard? And traded out Burton, who was a you know was a, an elite pick that they had. So, yes, to your to your point, and you do suffer, don't you? Because you don't mm. get the access to those picks when you finish up high on the ladder. But he's you know the last three or four years at Hawthorne, I don't know if they are in contention. And then to read his comments that, to say you can't just go to the draft, I thought that was a reasonable observation. Anyway, he disagrees. So, but the the point is, do you think North Melbourne? I mean, they'll do it in a variety of ways. But do you think their number one priority will get as many top 10 picks and as much talent as you can in? Do you think he will do that or do you think he'll be reluctant to do that? Um, 
See, see I, th- I think his biggest gains next year will be underperforming talent from 2022. Okay, so, give me so, some names. Well, Taron Thomas didn't finish the year in the seniors. Yeah. Now, Jason Hall Francis is a number one pick. He's better than what we've seen. Tom Powell is better than what we've seen. Will Phillips has hardly played. Um, Davis Uniac's just found his feet. His last six weeks were spectacular. Can he do that from round one next year? Um, Mackay was thrown forward unexpl- you know, in- inexplicably at the points throughout the season. So just settle him as, a, as an All-Australian standard defender. Give Nick Lark the opportunities one-on-one, forward yeah. of the ball. All these things he'll be able to create. Play mm. Charlie Comden. Yeah, there's, there's enough talent there and to have that a look worth, at. Is that worth what? Three or four wins instantly, do you think, for North? Just yeah. what you've explained? A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. It's a structure. They've been flying they've been running on strategic fumes for two years. Mm. Yeah, you know, they've mm. had three different sets of coaching manuals in, in what, thirty eight months or something. So I, I just think that this just give these guys a chance. He doesn't necessarily need elite talent, Clark. I think this is what this is the discussion, right? I don't think Alistair looks at the draft and says, For me to be the best coach in the country. I need picks one, two, and three. Mm. He says, just give me a pick that's around the mark we'll do another and one. I'll get the most out of that player. Just on Horn Francis, there's a little grab from Lauren Wood in the Herald Sun this morning. I think he spoke to, yeah, he did. He spoke to Fox Footy. He said he has spoken to Alistair Clarkson. We already uh, trust him. He's only been here a couple of days, but we trust him and what he's saying. But he suggested a role change, Alistair Clarkson, for Jason Horn Francis. He didn't say what position, but he said uh, he doesn't want me to try and be in there as much, I'm assuming, inside mid. Do you think mm. he goes a half back next year? Horn no, Francis. I think he's that centre forward player. Centre forward. I think he's your, your what do you, the, the striker role, the, the mid forward type, because he's a goal, he, he was a goal kicker in his, his under 18 season. So. No, let, let's, let's wait and see. Hey, you've got concerns about footy trips now. I think this doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. Well, my, my man Tom Brown uh, on Channel 7 the other night suggested briefly that 30-odd Essendon players were off to Spain together. In a, in a footy, I, I honestly thought footy trips were dead. Now, is it – I don't know. I'm, I'm very dull and boring when it comes to things like this, but I wouldn't have thought that's a great idea for Essendon with where they're at, without a coach, with the chaos that the club has been in, the opportunity to get yourself into trouble – that you don't foresee when you're on a footy trip in another country with 30 mates having a good time will be there. So it's just a, a little bit of a warning. I was I was surprised that, yeah, c- of course, little groups travel together and there's some young players traveling, uh, groups of eight to 10, but 30 of them going away to Spain together after the year that they've had, my, mm. my ears got pricked up with that. I'd be so nervous about that. You'd be nervous. About, so, oh, I would mate, be. Well, is it, is you, it, know, you know what it's like. Oh, yeah, no. I don't think the modern... Group traveling would be the same as the uh, <laughs> groups in the nineties. I think that'd be a little bit different. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not as concerned as you. I think that sometimes they just need to come together, these guys. Mm. And if they spend what four or five days together in Spain, and then go their own separate ways. I, I hope it's. I hope they I get hope through so it. I, I, I hope they get through it. I hope so too, 